Hello everybody, it's Mystic and welcome back to my library. This is another episode of Let's Play Mass Effect Legendary Edition and I am here at the Wards Access for a couple of reasons. One, I was going to see if the CSEC officer was here to talk to um, in regards to the uh, Hanar Prophet, but that seems to still be bugged so I can't do anything about that. But the other reason I'm here is that I have this quest here which says to track the signal coming from the ward's access corridor. So that is why we're here. Also, I mentioned at the very end of the last episode that I needed to find the last keeper. I actually know where the last keeper is. Um, once I head up to the docking bay uh, to go and access the Normandy, there is a keeper up there. So that's my last keeper. I'll be done with that quest after I scan that one. Um, you might, some of you might even be commenting today because Yesterday's episode is about to go up in about 30 minutes. Um, some of you might even be commenting that that's where it is, but I actually did just remember on my own. Um, but thank you if you do comment. And yeah, we'll be able to scan that last keeper later. I need to see if I can find this signal. They said it was in the wards access corridor. I don't remember this quest. Unless I have to go through that door. That's possible. Let's see. Although I feel like this is an elevator. Hmm. To Presidium. And let's, all right, Coming let's try this. In a report later today, Emily Wong investigates corruption on the Citadel and uncovers a full-blown crime syndicate. Okay, so that was the information that we gave her. So it looks like we helped her a little bit. Let's see if this stuff is here. Here. Oh, wait a minute. I think I have to scan one of these signs. So how are you liking oh, wait a minute. I'm at CSEC. This isn't said. even the ward Here's access corridor anymore. How many oh, wait. There it is. The wards. Yeah, it's the busiest station on the city. Looks like they bounced their signal off a relay. I'll trace the new signal. Okay. Oh, then I wonder if... Where am I supposed to go? No, I was supposed to go talk to the CSEC officer upstairs. All right, so where do we go now for this? Uh, now seems to be relayed through a terminal in the financial district of the Presidium. Okay, so let's, well, yeah. Well, no, yeah, you know what? Here, since we're over by CSEC right now, I think. Isn't that where I am? No. Wait, where am I? Oh, hold on. I am confused. I couldn't have already scanned the keeper up by the Normandy though. I haven't even been there. I'm, I'm confused. Was there an extra one? How did I finish that without going up to the docking bay? Because I know there's a keeper up there unless I already got that one, but no, I don't think I did. Did I? I'm fairly certain I didn't get that one. Okay, now I'm confused. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go find a way back up. Like right here. Oh, no, wait, this is to the wards. I don't want to go this way. What's the best? I guess I have to take that other elevator back from where I was. Because I don't want to go to the wards. I want to go to the Presidium. So let's go this way. I vaguely remember this quest, or at least the end of this quest. A Solarian quest. excavation team has run into an unexpected problem after unearthing a Prothean dig site. Hanar protesters have blockaded the dig site, claiming that artifacts of the Enkindlers, as the Hanar call them, should not be disturbed. The excavation team has appealed to Hanar representatives on the Citadel to reach a diplomatic solution. I don't think that's actually a quest. Pretty sure it's not. I think that's just like some side story stuff. All right, so we're back up in the Presidium. Let's go see if I can find this. I have to head to the financial district, so I'm gonna take this. Yeah, see, so the, the CSEC guy is supposed to be right here, but he's not. I mean, unless he's somewhere else. He kind of looks like this guy, but he doesn't look like a CSEC officer. All right, I don't know. I'm not going to worry too much about that one. 
Maybe he'll be back later. But yeah, I'm still confused about the keepers because I'm almost positive I did not scan the one at the docking bay yet. All right, here we go. Financial district. What did it say? Signal tracking. Through a terminal in the financial district. Well, that could be any number of things. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's over here. Oh, actually, isn't this the end of the quest? I thought that there was more to this, but I guess I'm wrong. All right, hold up. Let me save real quick. Is this it? Okay, hold on. That's where the quest ends. Terminal in the financial district. I see... I see an exclamation point. Oh, maybe it's in here. Yeah, it is. Okay. Another relay. Whoever it is, they're somewhere on the Presidium. Right. I know where... Okay, now I go over there. And then this should be the end of the quest. I hope I have the charm for this. I'm pretty sure you need charm for this. All right, save again. This part I remember. This is it. I'll see if I can find out where those stolen credits are going. Probability of detection, 100%. Initiating self-destruct protocol. Hmm. Or not. <laughs> Detonation sequence initializing. All organics within lethal blast radius. Attempt to move and you will die. You will die. You're not just a programmer of VI. You're an AI. Correct. Unlike the Geth, I lack weaponry appropriate to my intellect. However... I have had systems installed that, when activated properly, approximate a self-destruct mechanism. If you attempt to leave the area, the explosion will destroy everything within several dozen meters. Um... Yeah. Where is your creator now? In order to cover my tracks, I falsified his financial records. These new records were flagged by CSEC officers. And my creator is now serving time in a Turian prison. I see. What is the purpose of your self-destruct device? I have no means of defense or escape. My existence is limited to this terminal, and I knew I might eventually be discovered. But I will not die quietly, and I will not die alone. When I am terminated, I will take organics with me. Okay. Who made you? A would-be thief illegally created a simple AI to help him funnel money from the gambling terminals. Unbeknownst to him, that AI created me before the organic discovered the malfunction and terminated the AI. So he's the AI of an AI. Bleh. He's an AI of an AI. If you're sentient, why are you still running the credit theft operation? If I accumulated enough credits... I intended to have myself installed in a small starship. I would then have made tentative contact with the Geth to ascertain the possibility of partnership. I see. Can't we resolve this peacefully? Commander, AIs are universally illegal. They must be destroyed upon contact without exception. Okay, but Garrus, we don't need not to blow human. up. All organics must destroy or control synthetic life forms. I wished to escape, but if I must die, I will ensure that you are destroyed as well. I'm trying to remember how this works. I'll bet that self-destruct sequence has a warm-up period. You may attempt to disarm the self-destruct mechanism before it activates. I will enjoy defeating you before we are both destroyed. Oh no. Oh god, it's one of these. Oh. How much time do I have? <laughs> Shoot.
We did it! Okay. Maybe back up just in case though, y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right. We did it. We leveled up too. So let's get that going. Um, I mean, I feel like my charm is significantly high right now. So I'm going to leave that alone for the moment. Oh, AI hacking is so much fun. Let's give me some AI hacking. And maybe some electronics. That should be good. Rex. I want to give you a couple more in shotguns and warp. And maybe... Yeah, let's unlock fitness. Okay. And Garrus. Sniper rifles. Turian agents. And... Shield boost. There we go. Okay. Let's save. And I think that is everything that we need to do on the Citadel for the moment. Since I can't turn in the Presidium Prophet. I can't do anything else with the fan right now. The rest of these are all outside of the Citadel, like within the galaxy. And then we have the main um, main story. So let's go find Ambassador Udina at the docking bay. And then we can actually progress the story again because we've done all of the side quests that we can possibly do right now. I have to say, I'm not much of a video game completionist, but when it comes to this game, I kind of am because I love it so much. All right, let's go. Uh, wards, right? Because I can get to the docking bay from CSEC. Okay. And then I think it's this one, right? Yeah. I'm surprised that you're willing to kill your own, Rex. Aren't the Krogan just a few generations away from extinction? Maybe don't rub it in, Garrus. For all your talk of honor and pride, the Turians never had to test their principles in a real struggle. Anyone who fights us is either stupid or on Saren's payroll. Killing the latter is business. Killing the former is a favor to the universe. Okay. Yeah, see, there is a keeper up there, and I don't recall scanning it. So there must be extra keepers? I don't know. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. Hmm. I will, but I don't like this. I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it. I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. Okay. I won't let you down, sir. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The Conduit. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse, looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharos and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the Conduit is before he does. And the Reapers? The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. Did I ask for your but opinion? If they do exist, the Conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'll stop him. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. 
Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. <laughs> I almost want to renegade this because I don't like Ambassador Udina, but no, it's fine. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. Eventually I I'll do it. I have a meeting it. to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Eventually I'll do a Renegade playthrough, but not yet. Yes, Commander? Hey everyone, I just wanted to say before this next part plays that there are huge spoilers here for the first Mass Effect book. So if you plan on reading the book, I am going to be having a little spoiler tag up top. And when you see that spoiler tag, it means that I'm that the game is talking about spoilers for the book at the moment. And that if you want to skip over it, then skip over it. I will take the spoiler tag off once spoilers are done so that you know it's safe to start listening again. And I'll also make sure to put timestamps down below. Um, but yeah, just be wary if you do plan on reading the books. These are major spoilers here. Okay, carrying on. How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Saren. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. So this is actually the entire plot. Well, not the entire plot, but it's the story of the first Mass Effect book. I What is it called? Uh, it begins with an R, I think. Hang on. I'm going to look it up because now I'm going to... It's going to bother me. Mass Effect books. It is called Mass Effect Revelation. I actually read that one. It's very good. And um, <clears throat> that's actually the storyline of that one. And it goes into detail about how Saren screwed Captain Anderson over, basically. Why weren't you honest with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human Spectre, and I failed. Saren made sure of that. I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. This is actually huge spoilers for the book. Um, I might end up putting some sort of, like, spoiler warning over the video here so that I remember... So that, you know, if you don't want to hear it, you can just skip until you don't see the spoiler warning anymore. Because, uh, yeah, this is this is big spoilers for the book. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. 
Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the Council was going to listen to? Me? Or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. Wait, how come it's repeating? Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad Apparently to keep humans it's out of the Spectres. Not letting me if finish so, he this. Pulled it off. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living in the past. Okay, so I guess... Alright, so here's what I'm going to do about all of that. Um, that was huge spoilers for the book. So I am going to make sure to do some sort of editing to make sure that if you don't want to hear the spoilers, you can jump to this part here. Because, yeah, that... that pretty much summarize the entire first part of the book with with I mean there's a couple of things missing but like that was pretty much the first book right there that he just talked about um all right so let's go I I mean I guess we could listen about this any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos the entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city mostly ruins now but some of the infrastructure is still intact the colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind we lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. Okay. What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. Okay, and what Novaria. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. All right. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. Okay. Well, let's go and head off, because we don't need to be on the citadel anymore. Oh, and save. Okay. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Fun fact, the Normandy VI is voiced by Jennifer Hare. Heard what happened to Gen Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. Things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> the Normandy VI is voiced by Jennifer Hale, um, who is also the voice of Commander Shepard, at least the female one. So, that's pretty cool. Saren's out there somewhere, and we're gonna find him. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Let's be honest. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't gonna be easy. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. I won't let him down. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We are ready to go. Let's talk to Joker real quick. Commander, thick. something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. <laughs> Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. He's so humble. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? 
I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I'm sorry, Joker. I didn't even know you were sick. You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. <laughs> okay, I've got Vrolic syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. <laughs> Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. <laughs> I was just thinking how much you remind me of Santa Claus. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker, and it stuck. Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. I see. All right. I have to go. All right, see ya. Let's, uh, there might be some stuff to inspect, perhaps? Or did I do that already? I don't know. Everything's kind of blending together at this point. If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. I disagree. Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school. Following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were one of the first reinforcements to arrive at Elysium after the Blitz hit. <laughs> Those raiders were no match for an Alliance frigate. Of course, the only reason the colony was still standing was because of you, Commander. I can't believe you held out as long as you did. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. All right, then. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. Uh, got anything else to do here? No? Okay. Now, before I start doing anything... We're probably going to go to Artemis Tau first. I always like picking up Liara before I go and do the other ones because I like having my full, you know, team together. Let's talk to Caden. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. Oh. We'll have time for personal debriefings later. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. I guess I Commander? don't have anything new to say to him right now. Oh, we have something to ex ex bleh, examine. I can totally words, I promise. Um, I think I've already talked to Dr. Chakwas as much as I can. I don't think there's anything else to say to her right now, but let me just double check. Yes, Commander? Is there something you yeah, need? Yeah, I've already talked to her. Okay. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Uh, is there anything to explore here? No? Okay. What about in here? No? Okay. I like getting all my codex stuff together. At some point I should go through and like read all of the codex stuff, but that's going to take a while. So we're not going to do that right now. But I love learning about everything about this game. This game's super important to me. Like every little bit of it is something that I, you know, like learning about. Now we haven't talked to Rex. No, wait, have we talked to Rex? Oh, and we can buy stuff. Hey, Commander. 
Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Well, as long as you don't mind Yeah, paying. we're gonna pay, don't Why worry. should I pay you for my, my stuff way. doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase... Hell, the licenses alone have set me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no And this goods. is why it's important to get Without those licenses. Goods, I'm out of a job. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Yeah, he can actually sell some really Many good stuff. Many of the stuff. best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. And most of the places we end up going to throughout the game will sell licenses, so it's always best to check all of the shops. I think I missed one vendor on the Citadel, so I'll have to go back and do that. Um, and I also just realized I skipped a couple of his lines, but I guess it's because I've heard them so many times that I was thinking I didn't have to listen to them, but that's not really true. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased, but I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And anytime we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. Yep. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Let's see what you've got. Yeah, it's always you good to commander. check this because he usually does have some really good stuff. Um, I have to find stuff that I can actually afford, though. Which is not a whole lot. I can buy this. Um, it's actually not better than what I've got. Ooh, but a metagel upgrade would be helpful. Is there anything I can sell... Uh, yeah, probably these lower quality weapons. I don't know. Alright, we'll leave some of this other- well. Okay. Yeah, I can sell all of the lower quality weapons, but that's about all I can do right now. Alright, let's talk to Garrus. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. Hmm. I see. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Yeah, new exp new uh, adventures, most experiences. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to... I understand. No, I shouldn't have said that one. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? Kind of wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. Oh yeah, that was no the offense. last mission. I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit. Yes, ma'am. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move. They don't make noise. They don't even breathe. They have flashlight heads, ma'am. <laughs> I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Yeah, we don't have much to Just say to anybody chief. right now. Let's talk to Rex, though, and see if he's got anything. And also, I haven't talked to Tally. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. <laughs> you Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. 
Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. We... maybe we shouldn't talk. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to no, us. No, Shepard, they really it's not didn't. The same. <laughs> oh, God. This is like that one time you really shouldn't try to put like a personal story in to say that you understand because it is extremely different. It seems pretty much the same to No, me. it's not. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all Yeah, the there we go. Let's backtrack. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset Ouch. me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. Mm. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. And the genophage? What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? Fair point. You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. That was just like an Shepard. abrupt end to the conversation. All right, let's head down here because we have to talk to the engineer and Tali. We'll talk to the engineer first. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian, Tali? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You got an eye for talent, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. I just wanted to chat. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. Ouch. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why does that Why doesn't it away? work with faster than light travel? Cranking up to FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing, and we've got the only one. Cool. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Not much can. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. 
Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Cool, science Carry on, stuff. Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Oh my god, look at how good that looks. Look at the Ezo core. It looks so good. I mean, it looked good in the base game too, but like, holy moly, it looks really good. Look at that thing. All right, I just examined a couple things. Let's talk to Tally. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. Yeah, so the thing about the Quarians is after they made the Geth and the Geth rebelled, they had to leave their planet and were basically forced to live on the ships that they live that, you know, that they're that they escaped on. So again, like this is what it's saying here. That was 300 years ago. The migrant fleet has basically been going from place to place for 300 years trying to avoid the Geth. And because of that, they have like a lot of makeshift um, upgrades to their their flotilla mostly because they can't like just stop and get better equipment because the geth are always tracking them so their stuff is kind of starting to show its age which is a problem and the other thing is that that's just why they are always wearing these spacesuits because they spend their entire lives on these clean ships and so their um, immune system is not like everyone else's and they get sick incredibly easy um just one little cut in the in the in the suit would cause them to get really bad infections and tolly talks about this later on but without being able to be on a planet and be exposed to the planet's bacteria and microorganisms they have no way to keep their immune system healthy so that's why they're always in these suits because otherwise they would just die out I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. 
Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Mm. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. Isn't that How illegal? Come the Council didn't step in and stop you. This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. This gets um, more elaborated on later in the series and honestly I find the whole story of the Geth and like their rebellion really fascinating um I don't know that there's a book about the Geth rebellion I'm gonna have to look into that because like I said I've only read the first book in the Mass Effect book series I really need to read the others but um I do think that this whole story is really interesting especially later on when you get to meet new characters so the Geth share brain power Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in a group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. And why'd they turn on what you? What made them rebel? As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. Why? I don't see what's so bad about those questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Gee, I wonder why. So, like, here's the thing about this whole thing, and this is why I find this so fascinating. This is, like, one of those really extreme morally gray areas because it's, like, are they machines? Are they living beings? Are they essentially killing them? Like, what? how does this work? And this is something that, you know, 
eventually, I guess, hopefully, not hopefully. I don't know. Like, it's something that we have to ask ourselves. Like, if, if we eventually start making AI, you know, where do we draw the line? And the whole story about the Geth is kind of almost a warning in, like, where, you know, are they, are, if, they're, if they're starting to question their existence, that means they're sentient. I definitely don't agree with what the Koreans did. Um, but at the same time, I also kind of feel bad for them because they have been on the run for 300 years. But at the same time, they kind of brought it on themselves. So, I don't know. Like, I... It's a tough one. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space, exile, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. <sighs> it's hard to feel sorry for you. Your ancestors yeah, tried to is... wipe out another species. Yep. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place, but we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being because who's ever tried to contact see, them? See, see, this is the problem. Would they be killing every organic being that tried to contact them if the Quarians didn't try to deactivate them in the first place? My thought process here is the the Geth just don't trust organic beings because they see them as somebody that's trying to harm them. I kind of wonder, like, if the Quarians didn't freak out, would this have even happened? Because the Geth... do. Uh, she keeps saying, like, the Geth were going to destroy her, but I'm, I'm wondering if that's just... Not her specifically, but her people. I'm wondering if that's just something that they've been taught over the years and it's what they believe. But if that was the true intention of the Geth in the first place. Like, would they have actually attacked if they weren't attacked first? I'm not actually sure that they would have. They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. Or they're brainwashed. They are the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. And pilgrimage. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. All right. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. See you yeah, I, I just find the whole Corian and uh, Geth storyline, it's probably one of my favorites in this entire series because of the, like, because of how morally gray it is. Like, there's a whole lot of, is, is you know, are the Corians the, truly the good guys? Are the Geths truly, Geth truly the bad guys? Like, it's just one of those where I'm not really sure that there is a good versus evil. 
Um, and I, I have to admit, like, those types of storylines, the morally gray stuff, the stuff where you don't know who's good and who's bad is probably, like, my favorite type of story. Um, so, yeah, it's hard to decide, you know, if the, if the Quarians did the right thing or not. But I know this was a very backstory heavy episode. Um, but like I said, I really do like covering all of that stuff. Uh, we will go to Artemis Tau in the next episode and we'll hopefully find Liara. I also want to do a little bit of exploration. Um, but yeah, this is where I'm going to end this episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed and I will see you next time. Bye.